guys what's up so since you demanded so again uh, it is being extremely popular among you guys you have responded well so i will also respond so this is a part 1.5 of environment and ecology series this is me dr rohan sani this is the youtube channel it's a very high yield series because this year prelims 25 more than 25 percent paper was directly or indirectly will be covered by me in this environment series many questions came from the two videos i made earlier you all know it uh, approximately 10% of entire paper came from my videos anyways uh, so do watch these videos they are the best if i would have them in my preparation i would have been extremely lucky so you guys are please avail this facility so if you want to read more about me you can just google me and if you want to have any question you want to ask from me personally you can go to my facebook page and you can comment on the post of any of the video i do take care even if i don't reply i'll reply it in another in another videos so don't think that i don't read those comments or something like that so and you have to like the video if you like the video and then we move forward so you just hit the like button and in the comment section you can ask your doubts and queries uh, whatever is pestering you and you can go to my facebook page that is facebook.com slash romansani.official so anyways in this video i'll be dealing with the structure and function of ecosystem so first of all what is stratification so let's assume this is the like these are the grasses in a forest then these are small small shrubs then there are let's say bigger herbs or something like small plants and then there are huge trees so can you see one two three and four layers are being formed so this is uh, the topest layer is called as canopy of the forest c a n o p y while the other layers will be forming what is called as stratification that is layering so vertical distribution of different species occupying different levels is called stratification for example trees occupy top vertical strata or the layers of a forest shrubs the second herbs the and grasses occupy the bottom layers and the components of ecosystem are first of all what is productivity i'll be dealing with productivity and decomposition in this part and then we will start with energy flow and then we'll be moving on to nutrient cycling so we'll start with pond ecosystem as an example of a ecosystem which is self sustainable it is the it is a micro ecosystem it's a very very small uh, macro mega if you have not watched do watch point 1.3 deals with these terms so ecosystem is a self sustainable unit the abiotic component is always like temperature soil light and water the same as in mentioned in earlier videos the solar input the cycle of temperature day length and other climatic conditions regulate please mention this the rate of function of the entire pond so the solar entirely dependent upon sun each and every one in the earth directly or indirectly uh, the autotrophs are phytoplanktons that is the planktons means passive drifter please note these terms planktons nectons and benthos they will come in handy algae floating submerged and marginal plants so these are the autotrophs in a pond ecosystem consumers are zooplanktons they are also passive drifters the free swimming animals like fishes so fishes comes under the category of nectons that is they are active swimmers who do not care about the current they can swim with it or against it or neutral to it then bottom dwelling forms like b for bottom so b for benthos so this is a simple mnemonic you can make these mnemonics for you also then the decomposers are always fungi bacteria and flagellate small organisms so this was the about pond ecosystem we move on to what are the functions of pond ecosystem it includes conversion of inorganic compounds into organic compounds this is the function of all the ecosystem inorganic includes nitrogen phosphorus potassium carbon water so when sunlight hits chemical reaction occurs and they are converted into carbohydrates proteins and fats so this is the example of conversion of inorganic to organic so this is done by autotrophs then consumption of autotrophs is done by heterotrophs and finally decomposition and mineralization of the dead matter to release them back for reuse is done by decomposer so this is the entire cycle of ecosystem there is always unidirectional movement it cannot be like that from third trophic level the energy moves to second trophic level it is impossible it will always be unidirectional and it will be towards the higher trophic levels and its dissipation as loss will as occur as heat to the environment is also via uh, 
uh, respiration so these are the two losses heat and the respiration what is productivity so before dealing with productivity we have to deal with a term called as biomass so it is the mass of the living biological organisms includes everything under the sun in a given area at a given time this is called as biomass it is usually measured in terms of dry weight or by the organically bound carbon a species biomass is mass of one particular species and community biomass is mass of all the species in the community it includes bacteria microorganisms plants animals etc it is measured uh, usually do not include bacteria because their mass might alone run into billions of tons it is measured either in terms of dry weight 60 to 80 percent weight of water is not included in this case dry weight means you burn it down water is absolutely removed and then the weight which is remaining is dry weight it is also measured by organically bound carbon already told you standing crop is the total dried biomass of all the organism especially some definitions includes only autotrophs so it includes only plants at a particular trophic level present in a given area so standing crop is all the biomass of plants in a given area now primary production versus primary productivity so production will be total amount of biomass per unit area the unit will obviously be gram per meter square or in case of energy kilocalorie per meter square now rate of production will called as productivity so we will add, add weight per area per unit year year minus 1 or energy it is kilocalorie per unit area per unit time now primary productivity will be primary production divided by time it's as simple as that so amount of biomass or organic matter in terms of dry weight produced per unit area over a time period by plants during photosynthesis is primary productivity it is expressed in terms of weight that is weight per unit area per unit time or in terms of energy that is energy per unit area per unit time uh, so it is obviously in per unit area and per unit time so these are the important differences this will come in handy primary productivity is of two types that is the gross primary productivity that is the rate of production of organic matter organic matter already told you car carbohydrates fats and proteins uh, during photosynthesis now you have to decrease the respiratory rate plus the temperature losses so that will comes to be net primary productivity which is actually available for use by the higher trophic levels so gross primary productivity minus respiratory losses which is available for consumption to heterotrophs that is herbivores and decomposers is net primary productivity secondary productivity is defined as the rate of formation of new organic matter by consumers so it is always less than the primary productivity absolutely get into this your head factors influencing primary productivity will include obviously plant species certain plants can produce very very fast certain are not so efficient then environmental factors if it is good temperature good rainfall like in tropical rainforest so productivity will be maximum in tundra and polar region productivity will be almost zero or negligible then availability of nutrients if the soil is very very rich in nutrients like humus nitrogen phosphorus potassium then the productivity will obviously be very high and the photosynthetic capacity of plants already told you about it uh, so the net annual primary productivity of the whole biosphere is 170 billion tons dry weight of organic matter or 104.9 gigatons so billion is equals to 10 to the power 9 is equals to giga both are same thing all three are same thing so if we include entire dry weight so it is 170 gigatons or billion tons per year whatever you want to call it or if you just include organic bound carbon then it is 104.9 of this 56.4 that is 54 percent was the product of terrestrial organisms while remaining 48 was accounted by oceanic production so see ocean is approximately 70 percent of our surface yet rather than producing 70 percent it is not it is producing less than 46 percent is that understood so why this discrepancy because so productivity on land is far higher that is 426 gram of carbon per meter square per year for land production and it excludes the areas which are permanently covered with ice like antarctica while ocean just fixes 140 gram of carbon per meter square per year is that understood so in one meter square area approximately thrice is the productivity of land area per unit maximum productivity is seen from tropical rainforest and in water least productive is very deep lake especially their abyssal zones 
uh, you must have read about them the pelagic zones the benthic zones also called as aphotic zones also called as hedalic zones whatever you want to call it there are many names also called as profundal zones so i remember these six names abyssal pelagic benthic profundal hedalic aphotic more or less means the same highest productivity is seen in case of coral reef now important point nitrogen is limiting factor in oceans and phosphorus in lakes is that understood so just remember nopl something like that so this is the just i used to remember it like no ipl so nitrogen in ocean and phosphorus in lakes no ipl then we have decomposition so decomposers they break down complex organic matter detritus then i have already told you they convert into litter litter is detritus then they convert into duff then they convert into humus so the inorganic substances includes carbon dioxide water nutrients etc what is included in detritus is leaves bark flowers dead remains of animals fecal matter etc etc five steps include fragmentation leaching catabolism humification and mineralization so detritivorous are those who feeds in litter or detritus earthworm is the critical example it is also called as farmer's friend because it loses the soil and break down detritus into smaller particles it is called as fragmentation then water soluble in organic nutrients it go down into the soil horizon and get precipitated as unavailable salts also called as leaching then bacterial and fungal enzymes degrade detritus into simpler inorganic substances it is called as catabolism all the above steps they operate simultaneously now we have the step humification where accumulation of humus what is humus dark brown colored amorphous substance it is a reservoir of nutrients it is highly resistant to microbial action and decomposition humus is slowly degraded by some microbes and release of an organic nutrients this is called as mineralization humus degradation is very very slow process because of decrease oxygen uh decomposition is faster obviously if it is detritus is rich in nitrogen and water soluble substances like sugars and if it is having warm moist and airy environment please make sure these are very very critical words again i am telling you rich in nitrogen water soluble substances like sugars sugars are nothing but simple carbohydrates warm that is increased temperature moist that is increased humidity and airy that is increased oxygen so these are the factors which increase the rate of decomposition and if detritus is complex organic compounds like lignin and chitin on which enzymes do not work low temperature very very cold anaerobiosis means lack of oxygen it retards decomposition so guys if you want me to make uh, any more video on the high yield series or any other series of environment ecology i hope you are liking it till now i 100% assure you next year 20 to 30% of the paper will be coming from environment and ecology so if yes if you want me to make it then like the video below and comment on the post on my fb page so that is the only way i can know that you are enjoying the videos and you can comment in this section also below the in the youtube video so guys uh, this is the youtube channel and academy do subscribe uh, to get the fastest video links if you still have any query any doubt i am sure you must be having you can ping me at my facebook page that is facebook.com slash my name roman saini dot official you can also tweet to me at my twitter handle that is at roman saini do like share and subscribe and thank you for watching the video i hope your studies are going well do make sure the studies are going well have an awesome day